of the House Financial Services Committee. You see, seem to see contributors. It's great to see you, Barney. Uh, also, Adam uh, Michelle's here. It focuses on tax policy at the Heritage Foundation. Good morning to you. Uh, Barney, I'm going to start with you. It feels like there has been, dare I say, a lurch to the left uh, within the Democratic Party uh, when it comes to taxes and the conversation, whether it's about the New Green Deal uh, or, or, uh, or, or some of the other programs around buybacks uh, that have been uh, announced over the past couple of weeks. Are you in favor of what you're seeing happening right now? I am because uh, this lurch to the left, uh, and I am for some movement to the left in some substantive areas, but it's been greatly exaggerated. Um, Nancy Pelosi was uh, very neutral on the Green New Deal. Only a minority of Democrats have been uh, supportive of it, even if it's vague outline. So the extent to which, uh, in fact, a lot of the Democrats who won Republican seats, the, in fact, most of the Democrats who took seats from the Republicans are not in that most left-wing sector, although they are clearly to the left of the Republicans on a whole range of issues. I do think there was uh, room, not only room, but a good argument for increasing the, uh, the top rate. Uh, it's gone up. You know, I voted to raise the top rate under Bill Clinton. We right. had subsequently a great economy. There's one other point, though, I'd like to make, if I could. And, Andrew, I thought you had a very good point when you asked uh, State Senator Gennaris, well, what, what's the alternative? That, as you guys know, my mantra is, uh, the Henny Young been compared to what? When asked, uh, how's your wife? And my problem is this. One of the things we are not going to get now is any significant increase in spending for infrastructure, which is one of Trump's promises that he is not coming close to keeping. And the major reason for that is that the revenue that would have been used for infrastructure went to the size of the tax cut. And the problem is, I'll just close with this, when you were talking about increasing productivity in America, I think a well-done infrastructure program is the single best use of federal revenue. And so in that sense, uh, in particular, I, I was very critical of the overall size of the tax cut. Right. Uh, let's go to the Heritage Foundation in Washington. Uh, what I'm very curious about is just the polling. The, you know, one of the things that's so fascinating about this is there does seem to be a, a sense of bipartisan uh, support for more progressive taxation in America, uh, especially on the wealthy, in, in a way that it didn't seem to be the case uh, even 12 months ago. Adam. Yeah, I think that has a lot to do with how these policies are being sold. It sounds, uh, sounds nice to just tax the, the rich and they'll fund all the things that we want, whether it be infrastructure or Medicare for all or uh, the Green New Deal. But the reality is there's just not enough money at the top to tax away to fund all of these, these priorities. Uh, a wealth tax, as Elizabeth Warren has, pr uh, has proposed, raises a couple trillion dollars. That's well shy of the, of the 30, 40 trillion dollars you need for, for the sort of pr other progressive priorities. So these aren't really uh, proposals to tax just the wealthy. They ultimately have to be proposals to tax the middle class Americans. Uh, if you look at, at Europe, this is what they do. The top marginal right. rates of 50, 60 percent fall Mo all the way down to people earning 50, 60 thousand dollars a year. Adam, do you agree, though, that there is a, a sense of mistrust or distrust about the tax system broadly in the United States today, and that that's what's underlying so much of this angst? The, there is a, a great misunderstanding about, about how taxes work. You see that uh, in the news today, uh, or yesterday, when, uh, the, when uh, uh, we, all these stories about people's refunds not being as big as they expected to be. And it's uh, a, a fundamental misunderstanding of, of how taxes work. Your refund has nothing to do with how big your tax cut was. Most Americans right. got a significant tax cut because of the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. And, you're, and you got that over the course of the whole year. So how your withholding changed has nothing to do with how much more money you had in your pocket over, over the, whole, the whole year. So Amen. this is... It, com it comes That's down right. to a fundamental misunderstanding of who pays the taxes and, and, and how they're ultimately paid, and that's, and that's a problem. Hey, Congressman Frank, the, the infrastructure point that, that you made, I mean, the amount of revenue the government brought in it was, was still up 1% from, from where it was, so we didn't lose the revenue. The spending has gone up, but for us to have spent that money, the corporate tax money on, uh, or the Tax uh, Reform Act money on infrastructure, we would have had to not spend it, so maybe that's the point you made. We should not spend it on defense, or we should not, because the spending is still oh, there. We certainly, 
Look, on defense, uh, I, I'm puzzled by Donald Trump. I agree with him. I have for a long time uh, that our allies are getting a free ride on us. Yeah. But my, the paradox is the only way to get them to spend more is for us to say, look, as of two years from now, we're spending less. And so he does the other. He says to them, you should spend more, but he spends in any way as if they don't, so they don't feel they have to. But as far as the uh, revenue is concerned, let me just say, I just heard a very paradoxical argument. First of all, uh, there was a strong attack on the European tax system. Uh, whatever you think about the tax system in, in Europe, Germany seems to be doing pretty well, some others not. It's got nothing to do with what the Democrats are proposing. Secondly, yes, it is true, if you funded every ideal that every liberal has, it would cost us more than we could spend. Same with the conservatives. The fact is that if you were to get a couple of trillion dollars, whether it's from a wealth tax or more likely, I think, uh, from the administrative standpoint, from significant increases in the rate at the top level, and maybe you don't get a couple of trillion, it funds some of this. The, the notion that either you fund everything, Medicare for all, and all of the other issues, uh, uh, and you then have to raise all that. No, you don't. Uh, but if you can raise significant amounts of money by raising taxes on the very rich, and I, by the way, do not, there is no evidence that raising that top marginal rate to a reasonable level is going to right. diminish economic Barney, activity. Barney, we got to run. What's a reasonable level? Oh, I think getting into the high 40s. High 40s. Okay. Uh, Barney Frank, thank you. Adam, uh, Michelle, it's a longer conversation. We'll do it again with you guys soon. Talk to you soon. So we'll get a tax cut. <clears throat> it goes down to the high 40s. <laughs>